Well, we just had Henry Dimbleby setting out a compelling vision for fair and healthy food and a horrifying vision of uh, men and their nannies. Um, we're now going to talk to the chef and child health campaigner, Jamie Oliver, who's what you've had a little glimpse of here, to see what needs to happen on the ground uh, to make this vision a reality. And Jamie, it seems extraordinary really, if I take you back to the sort of the turkey twizzler years, that was 2005. It's been 20 years that you've been banging this drum for improving the health and the nutrition for kids in schools. Um, what, what, why are things getting worse? Uh, I think, you know, although we've made great strides, the environment around us has changed at a speed for lots of reasons. Um, you know, we've worked out that obesity is a normal reaction to an abnormal environment. Mm. And, you know, kids aren't genetically born to love nuggets and burgers. It's called marketing. And um, we've proved um, that kids have been tracked and followed and marketed to. And that's, you know, probably why, you know, the, one of the three people that have done profoundly important things in child health in the last 50, 60 years um, are Tony. Um, by the way, I'm apolitical, so don't get me into anything there. But Tony, when I first met you, as a both much younger men. Um, but um, <laughs> it was about, there was robust standards for dog food, but not anything for kids' food 190 days of the year from the age of four or five until they leave school. Um, and we were able to create those standards with training and equipment and various budgets to, to lift the spend on the plate for primary and secondary education. And, uh, and I've had to police, police check mm. that we haven't been able to dissolve, to dissolve that great work from there since. Um, the other person that's done great stuff has actually been Sadiq, uh, particularly Sadiq on Khan, Sadiq right. Khan. Yeah, um, you know, um, one of the biggest advertising real estates in the world just for context, uh, and, and we created nutritional standards for advertising, so essentially we banned junk food advertising. Um, and actually, what people never, and often the media and the public don't understand, is it's not the single action that's profound, it's the ripples thereafter. So, okay, so to advertise, you have to have a better nutritional standard, but it's, it's the R&D on other products, and therefore choice, and bigger portfolios of products, and, and, and I think the, con the concept of choice is profoundly important when people talk about is bad and bad choice or is good and bad choice and we're not presuming that you can't have the things that you don't want and we want you to have the things that you want but if you've only got bad and bad then you know the graph of national statistics on health which we talked about today only goes one way everything that's happened should have happened right so uh, and the third person that made a profound difference as well was George Osborne on, on the sugary drinks tax um, Cameron was never going to do it um, he felt burnt from, from trying to get a minimum pricing on alcohol over the line, which had all the science and data, but that went down like a lead balloon. Um, so that wasn't going to happen, but somehow Osborne went rogue. And, and just for context, again, it, really interesting policy. Like, it, it's the fastest reformulation of sugar on the planet. It's led the way. Other, other countries have followed suit. It generated nearly a billion and a half pounds, which was hypothecated to go to only schools for breakfast clubs and sports clubs. Mm. They, they quietly... I say they, I mean the Conservatives, uh, said uh, they took that away about a year ago, just, up, just over, but it was hypothecated just for, for breakfast clubs and, and school food. So they're the three sort of people of power that have made profound difference, but, it's, but the environment's changing very quick. So we, we have to be robust, quick and catch up. So would you agree with Henry that voluntary doesn't work? No, it doesn't work. So, 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 so for me, looking in a kind of... And, and you, it's, we have all the answers in this country. We have the people, we have the data, we, we have enough measurement, we could have more. Um, the answers lay within us, mm -hmm. but those people are often not empowered. They're often on the bottom floor or in the corner. You know, a little bit like social responsibility sort of 10 years ago, do you know what I mean? Like, uh, we need to grow the power of people that have the ability to shape the world that we live in. So I think, um, Having governments that set the scene, so let's look, talk about the sugary drinks tax, for instance. The largest source of sugar in our kids was the sugary drinks industry. It's very focused. Now, you know, that was lucky. 
because the good stuff is normally nuanced and you need to get into the woods on that. We haven't got a chance for that because it's not clear and simple enough to tell that story. But the rules of the game were feral. You know, something, I grew, I grew up in a little village in a little pub, you know, serving drinks to people. You know, like what was a treat and a joy has become hydration. It's a massive difference. And, and there's a lot of reasons for that. And you can see it every day in the trolleys. And when no one's trying to take nothing away, but I think the role of government is to watch, observe, follow the patterns. The patterns are very clear. And then just adjust, move, and facilitate more of the good stuff. And, and maybe, you know, is, is like these companies that are coming as a treat that are now selling hydration, you know, is it okay that they're treated the same as 30, 40 years ago? Like new rules, it's called a tax system. The fastest reformulation of sugary drinks in the world. Uh, and by the way, just before you think I'm anti-business or see, I've met the CEOs, you know, um, I, had C I had CEOs of drinks companies that fell into line quickly and that were kind of ousted by their peers. But also the business, the, the, the industry got bigger. Right. So when you reformulate, you have more choice, you have more product, they make more money. Yeah. So no one's thanked me for nothing, right? <laughs> that, if, 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 they, if their bonuses are measured on turnover and profit, Right? I, I presume they all got a bigger Christmas bonus because of the sugary drinks tax, right? which made the country healthier, gave people choice, more choices, more water, more, more milk, more fruit choices. So, look... So I guess, I guess the question is, what's the next one? Because you've set out this vision of government almost as a sort of chef, sort of sprinkling here and there. Um, we're looking at things like um, the watershed on junk food advertising yeah. that could have been put in you know at oh why do that it doesn't matter why would you do that it doesn't matter you know it's like you watch x factor or britain's got talent for one season that's a film's worth of advertising right so you right. think that's a missed opportunity well, it, it, well it's two things that's one of the few family shows that kids do watch but it's symbolic to behavior it's symbolic like when the government did the sugary drinks taxes i like crack on here's some rules you're going to sell your gear in this country, there's some rules. And, and, and I think, you know, with advertising, there's some rules. Yeah. Is it okay to get a film's worth of junk food advertising in one season of X Factor? Probably not, if you look at the statistics. So I, I think that's symbolic, but more, which is our worry as parents and kids, is the relentless advertising online, gaming, the sponsorship of youth sports, powered by caribou, and, 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 you know, just the effect on energy drinks and breakfast in secondary schools mm. is profound. Oh, and it doesn't matter. Talk to a teacher. You've got 45 minutes to do an A plan, a B plan, and a C plan. What do you think happens if there's three kids on energy drinks for breakfast? Very common, by the way, because I've checked all the bags, right? I, I've done it. I've done everything the teachers can't do. Can I have a look in your bag? It's unbelievable. The flow of cash between home and school is unbelievable. So we want the cash spent in schools. One of the only new bits of cash in schools is often the school dinners, right? So, but, you know, so energy drinks have the power to make a class less intelligent. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Teacher, Mrs. Teacher, if you, if you go into Plan B or Plan C class, over the course of the year, are they more bright or less bright? Do they get Cs or Ds, As or Bs? It's, it's so, oh, it's just energy drinks. It's cute, isn't it? It's fun. Woo! It's, it's, it's like behaviour, rules. Like, so on the back of the tin, it says, don't sell to kids or pregnant women. But it's not legislation. So they can't even fight me on it because it's on the back of their pants. So anyway, you can see I'm quite... You've got to control me today because I'm so... <laughs> I'm so, so passionate about it. And, I, and please do control me, but it's... Every day I think about this. Every okay. day I worry about this. And it, it can be fixed. It's so all very I'm, doable. I'm going to take you at your word then. What are the... Spell out for us right here what are the three things that you need to see okay. any government okay. introduce like what what do you actually need to see happen now okay first of all that's an impossible task there's a long list of things some big some medium some poor equally important but the three things i'm trying to get over the line because they're symbolic in some kind of way that might lead on to other things and and, and a different sense of thinking is free school lunches for the most vulnerable kids in the country profoundly important, desperately important. If you saw it, don't read it, don't think it, forget your opinion or where you grew up. If you see what that looks like and you feel what that looks like, it, it's bad. It's about 800. We are, we are defined as a country 
and a community on how bad bad is. It's really bad. So we have to protect, as a country, as a team, we have to protect those children. So we have to get that over the line. Mayor Sadiq is actually doing it uh, as uh, of this May. Uh, the, the, the local people like in York, they're doing it. But it, in Wales, you get it. And Scotland, you, you get it. Not in England. England's the meanest. England's the meanest. Those vulnerable kids. Those punces. Oh, I want to pay for those kids. See it. Feel it. Watch the child. See the parent pick them up. Understand where they come from and what's going on. Feed them. Feed them. Feed them. Feed them. I mean, presumably, you're, you're having that conversation with people who can make this happen. Just fix it. It's easy. Get it done. Are Crack you, on. Are you it's getting it, that confirmation? We, we, we've even, we even had it measured by really clever people that are trusted independently. Uh, over the course of 20 years, it would raise uh, £8.9 billion pounds for the British community. It, it makes money, but sadly, it's over 20 years, not a year. So I think, like, look, um, you asked for the third thing. I'll go on. Well, um, let me just ask you, Casey, okay, so you talked about the sugary drinks tax. Um, Henry's just spelled out the, what, is it 26 or 28 varieties of Kit Kat? I mean, why wouldn't you take the sugar tax into cakes, confectionery, you know, the £4 billion... Pound confectionery market, would you yeah, want yeah. to see it all through? Yeah, look, I, I think there's lots of clever things you can do based on data. The, the, the best data in this country on anything is basket data, right? Lots of public health is based on bad data and equations that make it usable, right? Basket data don't lie, ever. I mean, you, you could even have a colour-coded red, amber, green on your basket, and like, if it's red for a year, then you probably know you're going to die young. But like, at least you know. We still haven't even come up with a language... That's, we haven't even got a language on the front of pack that tells you the truth quickly. We've been arguing about it, and it's not, it's organised. Just uh, truth and trust in food. By the way, food. We're very food-centric food today. Food is the biggest industry on the planet. Bigger than anything you can think of. You can't give me nothing that's bigger than food. It's the biggest employer and the biggest industry. It's the mother of all businesses. Mm -hmm. We're not anti-business. Right, we talked about that earlier. Like, it's about rules. And, and actually, we all lose in the end if we don't look after our public. So if, if you're trying to create an environment, it, the only way to save the NHS is to have less people needing to go in. You can put as much money in here as you like, but it's the volume of people going in, younger. Because we spend twice as much on somebody who's obese in the NHS than we do yeah, I mean, more that, than twice. That's a top line, yeah, but diet-related disease is very responsible for a, a lot of the extra pressure put on departments in, in, in the NHS. I've seen it. I've, yeah, I've, I've sat in rooms with amputees from mainly type 2 diabetes yeah. and watched them chugging litres yeah, yeah. of, 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 you know, it's like your legs off and you're still... like So, so I think, you know, it's... You know, and, and you could say, it's not about judging people. It's not about judging people. It's about our environment. So the concept of food deserts. No, we don't. Yes, we do. No, we, like, the idea that you're 40 minutes away from any food and all that's available is bad for you. Mm. The prognosis will, will give you... We, we shouldn't be happy that the, the map of, like, COVID mortality um, is the same map as poverty, mm. Right? I, I, you know, so I think there's a lot of rhetoric around levelling up. Like, when me and Tony first sat down to get those standards put in place, that, was, that is levelling up personified. Not personified, because it's not a person, whatever the right word for that is. Right? Like, it, it's profound. Yeah. So for me, getting back, I'm trying to be professional. Like, <laughs> free school lunches for most vulnerable kids. Protect our children against junk food advertising. And if I had a wish for all of your children, it would be that every child left school knowing how to cook 10 recipes to save their life. Yeah. So if you look at like, the dark stuff about us and our young parents struggling to be parents, it's tough, isn't it, being parents? Like When I met Tony, I didn't have any kids. Now I've got so many. Um, <laughs> like, Can they all cook? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, we know, right? It's, it's tricky. You put a lot in, you don't necessarily... It's not, it's not good business, is it? Like, you put a lot in, you don't get a lot back. Um, but it's, but, you, but it, I do know it's, it, it comes out eventually. And in those cycles of life, like when they become parents, are they armed? 
And, and as, like, my, look, I come from a little village, little pub, and I've spent the, the last 25 years traveling the world, mm. right? Basically, cleaning up as a British boy, being an author of cookbooks and TV shows. Well, why is that interesting? Because my job's to, like, look at these cultures, absorb, and you can only do what I do if you listen and watch. So and, and when you're poor, I'm so sorry, I'm such all, a bad like... guest. <laughs> when, you're, when, you're, when, when you're poor in many countries in Europe, right, they still cook, yeah. right? Poor looks different. If you're poor and can't cook, right, it's, it's not a great, it's, for lots of reasons, it's not great. So that's where we're at now. And I just believe that if it, the two problems are obviously health and... Do we still the, teach cooking in schools? It's, it's, it, the, the, the up, it, it's sadly not, they don't, no. Not really. I mean, yes, so, some schools do it, but I, I, I think, w w w look, in all this chaos and all this darkness that we've witnessed today, like, I think the truth is that humans don't really react and make change until generally disaster or pregnancy. And um, that's when there's space, neurologically, that's when there's space to make new habits. So I, I, I think that... Um, I, I've forgotten what I was going to say, but it was going to be bloody good. Um, but, I think that is a perfect this, no, note. Go on, you finish your sentence, and then I'm um, going to wrap us up. What I was trying to say is, in, the only thing that makes change is pain. People don't change until the pain of not changing is worse than change itself. Yeah. That's what I wanted to say. It ain't my quote, it's someone else clever. Right? But this is a bad time, which gives us opportunity. I think today... And I think the reason that Tony has the Institute, um, it, it's about opportunity. We've got people that are writing um, the bits of paper, the, the manifestos, right? I need to drink because my mouth's gone dry. Um, see, normally I can do my job very well, but this matters. So, therefore, adrenaline's pumping around my body like I've had a lot of coffee. Um, uh, journalists in the room. All, all I could beg of both of you and I don't know which one comes first. The manifestos are very predicated on the papers. Papers, I, I would just beg of you. Like, I, I think in all of the chaos of darkness, we have an opportunity to change and, and put in child health at the heart of this country on a 10 to 15 year view instead of three. Average time of, of a minister, CEO, CFO is three years. Right? There are ships that pass in the night. We have to have a longer view. And I would beg of you, as someone that spends his job travelling the world, who comes home proud. And I, I, I know you're trying to wind me up again. I'm so bad. But my, my I'm not trying my, to wind you up. My, 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 no, I'm, <laughs> I'm just I, trying to wind just, this up gently. Yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> All I would say is, like, we've got such a lot to offer. Right? Britain is not broken. Right? It's just been tended very badly. And we need to fertilise the soil. Yeah. Right? We need to sow the seeds, and that's the children. Right? What I've learned, unconventionally in this world of politics and media, is like the trump card is always the face of a child. And it might be your child, it might be someone else's. Right? But if we can... If we can Make those, make the, I, I, I left school with nothing, right? And I had a very bad relationship with school. But I, I so admire the institution of school, teachers, um, the, the possibilities of 190 days a year, um, and to feed them right in, in the stomach and the mind. And I believe that we can fix this, truly. But, <laughs> like, I, I think the new education has to arm them with being able to manage debt and money and mortgages, and feeding their families right. And that's the end of what I've got to say. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. We absolutely, we absolutely I, love your passion. Bless you. We, truly. Um, I just... We, we love your passion. And just to say, Jamie, Jamie Oliver's going to be um, on the news agency. He's going to be leading our podcast 
um, this evening. So you can hear more, and there'll be more of a conversation about all these issues a little later. Um, he, you did mention coffee, so this is. I my, didn't have a coffee cue. today. That, <laughs> that that was not on coffee. No. Um, this is just my segue to get from health to education, which is where we'll be after coffee. Uh, Sal Khan, who's the founder and CEO of the Khan Academy, will be speaking to us on AI-enabled education before Priya Lakhani, founder and CEO of Century Tech, will present to us on how technology can transform schools across Britain. But a warm, well-deserved thank you. Thank you. To Jamie Good Oliver. morning, everyone. And now it's time for your coffee. <laughs>